the way it's done, the way we do it in horses, is we go ahead and, and uh, draw blood, 60 cc's of blood from the horse, and we place it in a large syringe. And I'll just show you the syringe real quick. And I don't know how well you can see this, but in the bottom of the syringe, there's a bunch of glass beads and they're coated. And what, what happens is you draw the, draw the blood in, mix, the, the beads will go ahead and, and mix throughout the blood. And the beads, what they do is they increase surface area so you get more an, um, antagonist protein formed. And what we do is we draw the blood, we incubate it for 24 hours, um, spin it down and the resulting plasma, we draw off all the red cells and the resulting plasma is rich in the antagonist protein. By the, the beads, as you can see, you'll get a 140, 140 time increase in the, in the receptor antagonist protein. You'll get a certain amount of increase in the interleukin, but, but not much, not like you do with the, uh, with the actual substance that you want. And what we, basically what we do is we go ahead and, and uh, draw the, when we separate it off, we're, we're left with about 25 cc's of this plasma. Uh, and what we do is we will, we divide it up into four to six syringes uh, to be used in the horse. What we'll do is when it's, when it's separated off, we'll, we'll go ahead and stick one of the syringes in the affected joint. Then we have the remaining syringes that we can freeze and we can give, uh, treat the horses intraarticularly once a week thereafter to go ahead and try and, tr to try and stop the process. The main thing that we use it for is inflammation of the joint, syn synovitis, capsulitis, and some arthritis. Uh, I haven't really used it in, in and tendon sheaths or bursas. Uh, personally, I, my, my experience has mainly been with joints. Um, you seem to see the peak effect after the third treatment. They, they recommend that your final treatment be uh, given four to six months down the line. I will use it on post-surgery cases. I, I go in there arthroscopy and arthroscopically and remove bone chips. It's a good therapy to try and help to promote the healing process. And, and it's pretty dramatic when you, when you have a bad joint and you'll, you'll inject it with IRAP and you come back a week later, there's a significant difference in the joint fluid from the first to the second injection. Um, you'll have, you might have some thin, bloody fluid that first time around. You inject it with the IRAP, come back a week later, and that fluid looks really good. It's thickened up, the color's good. So just from a, from a visual point, anecdotal point, it really appears to do, to do a fair amount of good. I would encourage um, you as owners to, to try and do your research on this as well um, and try and pick the right case. So Dr. Ferraro pointed out a really important thing. There's been, there's been a lot of people that have tried the IRAP, they've tried the stem cells um, on cases where it really wasn't that appropriate to use it on. And it was, you know, it, it, for example, I was talking to Doug O'Neill, and when Lava Man was in training, they used some IRAP on him, and it helped him, but then they also were using it on other horses that actually had chips that, that, were, that were still in there, and it's really hard to use something like that on a horse that's got a chronic problem that's going to keep aggravating itself. It just makes, it makes your therapy look bad, and you're not doing the horse any good. So, so be careful on how you use a lot of this stuff, especially since it's fairly expensive. Most of these therapies that we're talking about uh, aren't cheap. I mean, you have to, have to sort of weigh into, into how, you know, how you're going to justify using it. But it, uh, it has a lot of benefit, but just make sure that you to use the proper caseload for it. And from a personal perspective, I'm a practicing vet, but I also am a horse owner myself. And, and I will tell you, I sort of practice what I preach. Uh, I've used, I, I operated on a horse of mine the other day, and uh, I've already injected his, his knees twice with the IRAP. And I also had a three-year-old that had a sesamoid fracture, 
that I removed part of the sesamoid on. And any time you remove a, a piece of sesamoid, you're going to be damaging the suspensory ligament attachments to it. So at that time, after I injected him, after I operated on him, I collected some bone marrow and had uh, the guys up at Davis go ahead and, and grow up some stem cells, and I injected the stem cells back into, into his ankle. And, and I've been very pleased with the results up to this point. The ankle looks tremendous, and the horse is sound. Um, so it's not something I'm just trying to, to preach to you guys. It's something I do believe in. I think it has an, a valid place in practice. And it, in the long run, I think it's going to benefit you as owners with the proper cases to get your horses back to the races faster and, and in a sounder, you know, more competitive condition. Because basically, you guys want to come out here to have fun, but, you know, it's a business as well. You need to, you need to have these guys compete and, and compete at, at the best level they can. And I think these, these therapies that we've talked about will help you do that.